So both teams have three Tomcats and two uh, Falcons. That's going to be... Looks like an even matchup. I don't know about a MiG-29 versus an F-5. Oh, these... Uh, these longer range jets. As soon as these uh, F-16s get within range, though, they're going to do some... They're going to stick to everyone like glue. These uh, these F-14s need to kill a long range before they can get close. Looks like everyone's still rearming currently. Toro is ready. And let's wait for the ready from Red Star. Red Star is ready. So we'll count down from five. Oh. Four. Three. Two. One. Clear to go. And Red Star at the very front with these F-16s. Taking advantage of that very short takeoff to get as much distance as possible from the very start. Have some space in between the F-14s. Make sure not to eat any Anybody's wake? Let's check over on Toro's side. Second to last off the ground, that F5 uh, is gonna gonna need to try really hard to catch up. He's a lot slower than uh, all his friends up there. I believe in him. Godspeed, Ovi. We have Yosef taking the lead here. It's very rainy, very cloudy. Oh yeah, this is gonna make for some interesting dogfighting. Maybe these F-16s can get up close, uh, taking cover in the clouds. Beautiful Alaska liveries. Going really well with this uh, very white cloudy backdrop. See the F-14s are flying a bit to the south. Already at Angels 24. We'll see how high these guys can get.
That's a wonderful shot. Look at that. Look at that shine on the F-16's uh, front fuselage there. That is amazing. I should do that to my own livery. <laughs> Always love that bare metal look of some of the older jets, and seeing that on a modern jet like the F-16 is just beautiful. I keep saying I'm a fan of the Toro Squadron's uh, liveries, but damn. Now I wonder what these, uh, what the plan is for these F-16s flying so high, but only with Fox 2s. Every other airframe has much longer range uh, armaments than them. But you know, when they can get close in, then it's, it's just over for uh, the other guys. Joseph and Doctor about to cross into the circle. Seems they will be the first as they did get that pretty significant advantage on the runway. Very nice formation flying here. Now I believe uh, the most advanced aim nice they can carry is um, L's, is that right? Or P5's, I can't quite remember. Aim 9 P5's, yeah. So just the bare minimum for all aspect IR missiles. Okay, it seems like they're crossing about the same time, just read a little bit sooner. See, we have the F-14s kind of on opposite sides. Toro's going, forming on the north. And RS forming on the south. Turn on weapon labels in F-10 view. Is that a, let's see. There we go. Thanks for that reminder. See, they are about 85 nautical miles between each other right now. Waiting for one of these F-14s to fire off first. Goes to 404, let's start from jumping phrase safe after their attack match, yeah. I, I saw they were, uh, they're on Persian Gulf and one of them really didn't want to fly in the desert again, so lucky for them, they rolled Caucasus. But also, it is very cloudy and very rainy, so I don't know if they, uh, they got their wish or not. <laughs> See, 50 miles between them now. Could it get interesting in the mountains? Could it get interesting in the clouds? I don't think I've ever fought in, uh, in weather like this before.
They're going supersonic now, it seems. I love that sound. I do have the F-16 uh, uh, sound mod from, was it, Echo 1-9, I believe. So you get to hear that. All four F-16s spearheading this. Hopefully we don't uh, see them shot down before they get close to anyone. Twenty miles between them now. Should start to see missiles flying, at least from the F-14s, pretty soon. Satellite, right? Let me. Top right. Oh, here we go. Thank you for that. All right, aim seven out from first from Mustang. Looks like F-16s are already defending. Nothing from the Red Star Squadron quite yet. Another aim seven out. Looks like it's going for Honey Badger. Fired off from Werewolf. I don't think that has the range. Hopefully, it doesn't hit Mustang here. No, it is. It has gone uh, cold. Or, I mean, defeated. R twenty seven out from Zenic. She seems like none of these missiles are tracking quite yet. Xenix shooting at his R-27 towards Pyrox. Can Pyrox defend? There's Fenix right behind him. I believe he gets away. He might have bled enough energy from that missile. And the missile is defeated. Sure to miss anything here. Aim 9 coming towards Mustang. I don't think that has the range. See if Werewolf can keep this Aim 7 tracked on Doctor, but Honey Badger's coming in right to his 3 o'clock. He has to turn away and engage. We'll see him merge here. Right in the clouds. I wonder if any of them can see anything. There's that sonic boom. Telling each other that they just merged. Doesn't seem like... 
Mustang is, or I mean, Werewolf is uh, not going to bother with that merge. All six members are still, al uh, still alive. Can't seem to find anyone in these clouds. Aim seven out from Whiskey, heading towards Aspar. I don't think you can defend this one. This is very close aim seven shot. Oh, he is really low, going low and fast. You'd love to see that from an F-16. Maybe you can get over here and get some ground cover. That missile will be easily defeated if you can manage to uh, hide behind those hills. And it is gone. Dr. Yosef shooting off an aim nine towards Rocky. Don't think they are aware. They got no missile warning from those. Let's see F-16s locked on to Rocky and Mustang. Looks like this aim nine is going to get Mustang. And another one. Aim seven. First kill. Yosef down Mustang. Doctor's chasing down Rocky. Let's see. We missed anything else over here. All six members of Red Star are still alive. I think I missed one of the Toros getting downed. Absolutely on Ronky's rear here. And that is Splash 3 for Red Star. That aim nine is completely defeated. Werewolf looks a little lost out here. Wyvern might be coming from below. Just completely lost in the sauce in these clouds. Do both teams have an active GCI? I believe so. They should. It's like Wyvern might be having trouble finding Werewolf in those clouds. Still three alive left from Toro. Oh, one of the uh, one of the Red Stars got uh, downed. It seems I missed that completely. Aim seven coming in towards no one. It is defeated. Aim seven going on to Ovi. I don't think he knows. Oh, that poor F five. I believed in you. And that is all of Toro wiped out with only one casualty from Red Star. Apologies, this is my first time doing this sort of thing, so if I missed any splashes, that is my bad. But I seem to got most of them, so. And now I believe rules say once all enemies are defeated, the winning team needs to remain in the circle for five minutes and return to base. They would let me know if that is correct or not. <laughs> no need to wait for five minutes. Understood. So they can just return to base. Return to own base. Yes. <laughs> I I believe I remember a Satek match where someone flew to the wrong base and uh, they were the last one alive. Is that right? If my memory uh, serves me right. <laughs> F 
And apologies, I know Airshow usually has, uh, say tech, I mean, uh Um, tech view footage for you while the team is RTB. But unfortunately, I do not have the TacView Pro, um, the paid edition. So I do not have that luxury. Or we can take some uh, beautiful scenic uh, shots of these jets. Shooting off his missiles instead of just uh, dropping them. Interesting. Can imagine Whiskey's RWR just going insane right now. Actually, I don't know if R60s are radar guided or IR. I forget. I don't know a lot about Russian missiles. <laughs> Wyvern over here going to space inverted. Semi-active radar homing. Understood. No, this, um... These conditions really make for some interesting dogfighting. We had a couple people just absolutely lost in the clouds. Saw two F-14s merge and they just did not care. They heard the sonic boom, they are like, I'm just gonna keep going where I can see. <laughs> You lied? Sarge lied to me. Can't believe it. Their IR? Understood. Okay. R-27s and R-60s are like the two IR missiles that I know from Russia. And then I know there's there's a um, there's an IR-27 I believe. The ETs. The T's. Uh, R-27Ts. Anything with a T in it is a uh, is an IR guided R27. I would love to thank Alpha Gator, the 51st PVO, for giving me this opportunity. Thanks for all the follows. On his channel. And it seems they have controlled the area anyway for five minutes. That was some very good um, chasing down from uh, Yosef and I believe, who was the other F-16? The other F-16 from Red Star, absolutely on those, uh, those two from Toro. And that's exactly what I mean. Once those F-16s get close, they will stick to you like glue. And they will catch up. There is no outrunning those. And I will say I am very biased against the F-16 because uh, I worked on it for six years. Now, uh, I got a question for Gator or anyone else that uh, 
knows how this works, is the next match going to be, or the next round, going to be on a different map, but do I need to do another dice roll? Or is it going to be on the same, uh, this same mission? Same map, teams will switch sides. Understood. Restart mission after all pilots land. Got it. Got Yosef in the head, about 30 miles out. Again, sorry for all the dead air. Again, I don't have tack view uh, to view live. Next time, I will try to uh, purchase the premium uh, version of tack view so I can do that while uh, teams are RTB. You know, I said I believed in Toro um, bringing that F5, but um, I really am wondering what their game plan was. Absolutely severely outmatched by almost any other aircraft. Unless one team just brings a MiG-21, they kind of have to go to their own little area to fight one-on-one -on -one while the big boys play uh, around the clouds. for them to have a fair match against each other. Rio Yosef coming in on the base now. Set our camera down here and watch the landings. Oh, dang it. You know what? One thing I forgot to do is uh, a poll. I forgot to do a poll for the at the start of the match. We'll do that next round. Go showing off that overhead brake, popping some flares. It's like Whiskey will be the first one to land here. Oh, 
Unless they stay at 3,000, they're also going to do an overhead break. I believe that is the case. Everyone's going to do an overhead break. Or just coming in at 1,800 feet. <laughs> Predict RS will win round one. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Plasma says the weather sucks and the pilots are complaining. <laughs> Well, at least it's not desert. <laughs> See, they... M Looks like they might be landing in order of... Least fuel. The MiG-29, understandably. A very thirsty boy. Absolutely butter landing. Better than my first uh, landing in the MiG-29. These lovely flyovers from uh, his teammates here. Let's see who's next. You got whiskey coming in now. Okay, I could slow down my camera with control. Got it. Oh, and the lights turned off. Those would have been useful. So I don't believe I have FOV control for F11 view. Or at least I don't remember what it is. Absolutely butter. Looks like we had two ship landing with Honey Badger and Yosef. Plasma is saying, watch out for a crash. That very well might be possible here. I 
Something coming a little fast. Bounced on the runway. I would have figured that would have been the easiest landing. And Yosef is doing a go around. Maybe it just wasn't confident in slowing down enough in front of uh, or behind Badger. Like whiskey or wyvern is not quite uh, lining up yet. Yeah, that's about the approach I take sometimes, too. <laughs> but honestly, the F-16 is so damn easy to land that you really can't just get away with uh, turns like those. You gotta love a jet that does literally everything for you. And finally, we have Wyvern. If I mispronounce anybody's names, uh, I apologize. I did not study on the squadrons. I don't know what countries you guys are from. So honestly, I'm just kind of spitballing if I see uh, if I see a name I don't know how to pronounce. You can keep it straight. Yeah, there he goes. Great landings from uh, everyone on Red Star. No DLC, uh, which uh, DLC you're referring to? 